G'day guys, today I was hoping to do a little bit of a chat about me. I've been receiving a whole bunch of questions on Facebook and through YouTube and so on. Um, and some people have been asking what's my background and wanting to know a little bit more about me. So here we go. So I grew up, um, so I was born in a place called Adelaide, Australia. Um, back then it was a much smaller place. Um, and I grew up in, in northern Sydney, I guess, in a place called West Pimble. Typical sort of middle, middle class Sydney, I guess. Nothing particularly historic, although I will say that my dad was born in Melbourne, but his grandfather was Irish and my mum's side of the family came from um, Scotland and the Isle of Man. When I was 16 I went over to the UK and I lived there for 11 years, um, mostly around Manchester but also um, I lived up in places like Preston, down in Cornwall and across in Leicester uh, or Leicestershire. Great places, had a fantastic time, wish I could go back and would do at the drop of a hat. So perhaps one day after um, after COVID, then I'll be getting back there. I do have some big plans to do some uh, full on documentary style videos if I can get back out to Europe, but I'll be um, needing to see how COVID goes before I do that. Uh, Alrighty, oh, uh, when I was 17, I joined the British Army. Uh, I guess that's what you sort of do really um, when you're a, um, a 17 year old who's come from a fairly conservative background. Um, I joined a B Company for Para, who were based at the time in Oldham. So uh, Paras were the parachute regiment and they date back to, I think they started in what, 1940 over at um, the airport in Manchester. The name escapes me for now, sorry, damn it, leave a comment below if you can remember what it's called. Paras were really rough and ready, uh, and certainly not what I was expecting as a middle class kid. Um, one thing I learned very quickly, you have this poster boy kind of image of a soldier who's like, you know, all in the mud and stuff. That looks great. Getting to that point is a lot of hard work. Um, and, you know, the, the poster doesn't translate to you the amount of sweat, blood, tears, and all the smelly stuff that goes with it. Ah. Um, Anyway, I moved on to medics because um, under the defence cuts at the time, the paras were cut down and they had six battalions at the time and they were cut down to just four. So four para moved to Scotland uh, and I, um, I wasn't about to commute from Manchester to Scotland. That wasn't going to happen. Um, so, 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 so. Um, but I, I developed a very strong passion for history when I was in England. I, I went around dozens of castles, I can't remember how many, and I, I, I walked a lot of very historical battlefields. It's so, um, it's so disappointing in some ways that a lot of these battlefields have been lost and built over, um, and it, it actually just it makes me cry sometimes to think of the destruction of British history for a gain of some houses. I, I, there must be a better way to, to manage this. It frustrates the living crap out of me. Um, especially when, when some of this history is, is just so important, we'll never get it back. And now you've built towns and, and villages over it. Um, you can't even investigate it. Like, it's, it's, just, it's just appalling. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, Wow, what else can I say there? So I spent um, six years in the British Army. I did some fantastic stuff. I had a great time. 
Um, I was a reservist the whole time, although I did a lot of full-time work um, with the, the regular army. Um, never went to war or anything like that. Was on standby for Bosnia a few times and also standby for the, for the first Gulf War. Um, but there we go, alrighty. Um, went to uni, did engineering and product design, um, and then came across to Australia. A few years after that, uh, I joined the Australian Army again as a medic and um, gained qualifications as a, as a nurse, so what they call a double EN, um, endorsed enrolled nurse, so we had access to you know, administer all kinds of different drugs and medications um, to do all kinds of interventions in the field, all that kind of thing, and also had qualifications in paramedicine. Um, again, never went to war, didn't do any deployments or anything like that, but did a lot of active service in terms of um, work in the field and supporting full-time, you know, regular units and on um, exercise and that kind of thing. For a medic, it's, it's different to a lot of the other corps, I suppose. Um, you know, it, it doesn't, training for us really isn't training uh, in, in, in that sense. Um, and I don't want to start a big fight over the different cores and who's better and who's not and who's a real combat core and who's not, goodness me. <laughs> um, because everyone's just as important as everybody else and that's, that's just the way it is. Um, and the army wouldn't be the army without you know artillery and tanks and armored vehicles and all the engineers and everyone else um and, and medics are just as important as everybody else in fact i think we should have way more medics we will work crazy hard uh and it's uh, unfortunately most australian medics end up with pdsd and all kinds of emotional and psychological problems i was i was in that boat um i've saw you know i had my best friend die in my arms after an accident, um, I've seen people blowing up, I've seen people with all kinds of stupid injuries, um, and it was a pretty traumatic time for me. Um, there we go, so, so, and I did six interstate moves in eight years. That's kind of a big deal because when you've got little kids, and I had three little kids, um, uprooting them every time, almost every year, um, was was just massive on, on them and the the effects on on little kids. It's uh, it's just not right, um, and I don't know why the army can't manage people better. So I got out of the army. Um, I have a whole bunch of physical and emotional and psychological um, issues. I guess so we'll, we'll just call it that and, and move on. Huh. In many ways, I really do love my time. Love my time in the army. Um, I look back on it with a lot of satisfaction. I, I, I think I was a great soldier. I, I did a lot of stuff. I didn't have the opportunities to go overseas, which is a shame. I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time in, in a few instances. And um, anyway, moving on. So once I'd left the army, I experienced a lot of the same stuff a lot of other guys do as well. And that was that reintegrating into civilian life is really hard. Um, the army does things just so differently. And it was just a real, real, like, amazingly hard. Um, fortunately, I got some great support through a veterans community in Brisbane. Uh, they're called Mates for Mates. I can't say enough for these guys. They are just fantastic. Um, and they have saved so many lives um, of so many veterans. Um, they're just a great bunch of people, uh, and I've got you know some some wonderful friends through there. I've got through uh, you know the, the last whatever it is five years, six years since I discharged. Five years. Uh, I, I left the army in 2016. Um, yeah, since then I, I I really finding my feet now. But the the first kind of Five years was really hard for me to to find my way out of the army, and 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 the reason for that is pretty simple: is that that your life be, very quickly becomes um, defined to an extent through your position and your rank, 
and the, the trade that you do, by trade I mean everyone has a trade in the army, whether it's um, an infantry soldier, combat engineer, whether you're a driver, a, a gunner in artillery, whether you're a pilot or whether you're a medic. So that's all that, you know, there's, there's hundreds of trades out there, cooks, clerks, all sorts of wonderful people um, who make the machine work. And so that's that's your definition, that's, that's who you are, what you are, and I guess um, once you leave, you don't have that anymore, and it's it's just so really hard to to push through it. Um, I've got a really great range of support from a lot of different people, and I'm, I consider myself one of the lucky ones. I consider myself very fortunate, and I'm I'm very thankful for the the support that I do get. On the outside of defence, uh, I I really felt the need to create a new purpose and a new life for myself and I tried to do that through volunteering. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to volunteer up at the Abbey. So that's the, um, there is an Abbey up at Caboolture in Queensland for those of you who don't know. Um, and they run a medieval festival with a banquet and a few other bits and pieces each year. Great bunch of people, um, really fantastic opportunity and I learnt so much through these guys. So um, massive shout out to these guys and if you're, I've done videos previously and I'll do them again on the Abbey Medieval Festival and the Banquet. Um, for those of you who, who, when we can get back into medieval events, I'll definitely be going back um, and I will be hopefully being able to, to go with a whole big bunch of friends this time um, and, and my group and my crew. So really looking forward to that, to getting back to the Abbey and getting back to the Banquet. It's going to be so much fun. Um, and through this, this was really kind of developed and spiked, I, I guess, my, um, my interest and my passion for education around medieval history. Um, and I decided to start my own YouTube channel. Um, I'm really passionate about it and I really get excited about it. Um, I've learned so much in terms of the crafting and so on. You guys have been fantastic. I really can't say enough. You've given me so much guidance and I love the, um, the critique. Um, please keep it positive and on point, but you know what, I do read all of my comments, so please leave comments below. Um, I really find it very useful and beneficial. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff happening this year in terms of, of what we're trying to do. We're hopefully going to start building a, um, a medieval style uh, farm, in, in, which will be in Queensland, and that will hopefully be able to open up in the future. That will be very interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Um, really looking forward to seeing how that works out. But there we go. Alrighty. Um, so I guess that's that's kind of me in a nutshell. Um, did my military career. I've done. Uh, I've, I've worked as a commercial designer and and that kind of thing as well. Um, had all sorts of different jobs, but um, I've really found a lot of fun and excitement and purpose around medieval history and it's something I, I get really excited about. I, I love sharing my passion and my knowledge with people. I don't have any formal degrees or qualification uh, in medieval history as such um, and perhaps in the future I'll be able to do something like that but right now it is just really my passion which I like to share. I like to share my DIY videos, my historical sewing videos, my you know um, videos around medieval techniques and fighting and culture and history um, and it's, it, it's just a real big buzz for me so so there we go that's a bit of that's me in a nutshell um, I really hope that kind of like um, introduces myself to you guys tell me a little bit about you I'd really like to hear about it uh, I know there's lots of you guys who um, who like watching my videos as um, our subscriber community is growing daily and it's I think it's going to become really good in 2021, really looking forward to this year. I think there's so much opportunity here, we've got some big projects lined up and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing uh, your, guy, your feedback, um, this is going to be lots of fun. So please tell me about yourself, uh, how did you get into history, what kind of groups are you in? Um, do you do medieval combat or, or were you more interested in the culture and the um, religion that goes with that? I'm really interested to hear. Please leave a comment below. Now in terms of medieval reenactment for myself, um, I'm a member of the 
Company of the Night's Bachelor here in Brisbane. Although um, I haven't been able to train very much in 2020 because of COVID. Hopefully there'll be a bit more of that happening um, this year, we'll see. Uh, what else can we say? Um, but like so many of you, I've got a really nice collection of medieval armor and weapons. Um, and it does does expand a little bit. I've, I've got some really cool purchases lined up for the next six months and we'll be doing lots more reviews as those um, purchases come through. Lots of really cool stuff. Really looking forward to it. Righto guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this is a bit of an introduction of myself to you guys. Uh, really looking forward to your feedback. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.